The Volkswagen Passat has always been a popular tow car, and deservedly so. No other model has won the overall prize at the Tow Car Awards more often. Fresh from adding a fourth win to Volkswagen's trophy cabinet, we're going to get to know the new model better. The ninth generation has changed significantly. It's only available as an estate, there are no saloons, and there are no diesel engines. Instead, buyers have the choice of plug-in hybrid power or the mild hybrid petrol that we're going to be driving today. Over the course of this review, we're going to concentrate on what the car is like to tow with, but we'll also think about how it drives from day to day. We'll also consider its value for money and running costs, and we'll show you inside the cabin. Only when we've done all of those things will we sum up the pros and cons of the Passat as a tow car. When you've watched the video, please do remember to click like and to subscribe to the Camping and Caravanning Club's YouTube channel. Click on the notification button to make sure you never miss a video again. For our towing test, we're using a Bailey Discovery D44, which the club has on long-term loan. The Bailey's a fairly light caravan with a mass in running order of 1,102 kilograms, well within the VW's 85% match figure of 1,000 336 kilos. One of the things that worried me a little bit when I first read about Volkswagen's plans for the new Passat was that the car wouldn't be available with a diesel engine. Now, say what you like about diesel power in general, but for towing duties, the low down pull of a good turbo diesel and the fuel economy uh, make it a type of engine that's really well suited to towing. Well, the more I drive this car, the less I miss diesel power in practice. The, the 1.5 litre mild hybrid engine does a good job of towing the Bailey. Now the Bailey is quite a light caravan, but earlier in the year at the Tow Car Awards testing, we pulled a much heavier Adria caravan uh, with this exact same car, and it coped very well indeed. Performance is fine, but what really matters when towing is stability, and the Passat is a very stable tow car. Out on the motorway, around high-sided vehicles or in crosswinds, it doesn't seem to get phased at all. It tows straight and true. The new Passat drives well without a caravan too. The ride is a little firm at low speeds, but the suspension does smooth out bumps rather better as speeds rise. And also on this R-Line model, you have adaptive damping, so you can soften the suspension right off if that's what you prefer. On twisting roads, the Passat handles well enough, but it certainly isn't as involving as a BMW 3 Series. In fact, the car's natural habitat really is the motorway where it's uh, nice and quiet. There's a bit of road noise, but nothing too intrusive. And it's capable of covering long distances in great comfort. Let's take a look inside. So as soon as you get behind the wheel in the new Passat, probably the first thing you're going to notice is the new infotainment screen. Now, it's 12.9 inches as standard, but this car has the upgraded 15 inch screen, which also means you get a head up display. So the, the, the bigger display in particular really is very impressive, very crisp and clear, vivid colors, and it's easier to use than some recent VW systems as well. The only thing I would say is that the air conditioning controls are part of the touchscreen personally. Perhaps I'm a bit old fashioned, but I prefer to have separate physical controls, but at least the key climate control functions that you might want to access on the move are permanently on display along the bottom of the screen so it's not too bad. In terms of the driving position there's plenty of adjustment both for the steering wheel and for the driver's seat. On our line specification cars like the one we're driving you have electric adjustment for the lumbar support which is great if you suffer from a bad back and if you do start to get any twinges on a long journey, uh, the seat actually has a massage function, so it will soothe your aches and pains as you drive. In terms of storage, there are decent sized door bins, and the door bins are lined with felt, which should stop uh, items from rattling around. There's more storage space here underneath the driver's armrest. You've got twin cup holders, and uh, as well as USB-C ports, there's a wireless charging pad for compatible smartphones. But thinking of smartphones, actually, I should have mentioned that the infotainment system can connect wirelessly uh, for both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. 
So that's the front of the car. Let's go and take a look in the back. So the old Passat wasn't exactly short of rear seat space, but the new model is even better. Volkswagen has added five centimeters between the front and rear wheels, and they put that to really good use. So I'm six foot three. The driving seat is set up for me, but I've got leg room to spare. There's absolutely loads of space in the back for adults to be comfortable. In this particular model, this car has got uh, the panoramic sunroof fitted, and that does steal a bit of headroom, but I've still got enough room to sit up quite comfortably without my head touching the top of the car. In terms of practical touches, you've got twin USB-C ports here to keep mobile phones charged up or tablets. You've got air vents between the front seats to keep everyone supplied with chilled air and there are separate temperature controls in this particular car. You have got Isofix mounting points as you'd expect for a child seat. And in this car, in fact, you've got Isofix mounting points in the front passenger seat as well, which is great if you're traveling with a young child on your own. You've got a fold down armrest and in the armrest, there are twin cup holders. So rear seat passengers can have a cup of coffee as well. The only real downside uh, to the rear cabin of the Passat is this very big hump in the floor. Now that does get in the way a little bit if you're traveling with three passengers in the back, but otherwise lots of space, plenty of practical touches. Let's have a look in the boot. Again, the old Passat was hardly small in terms of luggage space, but the new model is absolutely huge. You get 690 litres for your holiday bags. There's no load lip to speak of. The boot floor is nice and low, so you don't have to lift heavy items up high to put them inside. And it's very easy to extend the space if you need to using these levers either side of the tailgate to fold the back seats down. If you do do that, you fold the back seats and take the parcel shelf out, then you have 1,920 litres of space. To put it another way, if that's not enough for you, you probably need to hire a van. The tow bar drops down at the push of a button and the electrics are mounted on the side of the tow bar, well clear of the bumper, which makes it nice and easy to hitch up. At the time of our test, the cost of the drop-down tow bar and electrics is £1,050. Now that option includes the trailer assist reversing aid. Price-wise, the Passat range starts at £38,490, with this R-Line spec model costing just under £43,000. The official combined economy figure is 50 mpg, which is impressive for a petrol car of this size. While towing the Bailey, we've seen an average of 28.5 mpg. It's never easy choosing the overall winner at the Tow Car Awards, but having spent more time with the Passat, I feel confident that we've made a decision that will stand the test of time. The car is really good to drive, both solo and while towing a caravan, but it's the spacious and roomy cabin that really makes the VW stand out. When you've watched the video, please do subscribe to the Camping and Caravanning Club's channel if you haven't already. Click on the notification button and you'll never miss any of the club's tow car, caravan, camping and motorhome content. If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to click on the thumbs up button to like it and let us know what you think in the comments.